Hey YouTube, this is Curious Guy. Uh, today's uh, clip here is about, uh, not about radio, not about anything in particular about ham radio, but it is about electronics. Um, at a recent car boot sale, uh, we received a uh, electronic keyboard, as you can see spread out in front of me here. Uh, this is a Casio SA65. Uh, it came uh, with uh, uh, the incorrect power supply, the battery compartment was badly corroded, and when you push the keys, there is a problem. If you listen, nice sound, good sound. Here we have two notes for one key press. And in fact, they're adjacent keys, so one key push sounds the uh, uh, both notes together. But it works everywhere else. There's that double key note again. So throughout the uh, the keyboard, every octave, <clears throat> there is a pair of notes which uh, seem to be overlapping. I actually pulled out the uh, the uh, schematics, a service manual for uh, this particular keyboard. It was on the internet. Very very helpful. I've spent a little while trying to figure out uh, what's going on and what's going on wrong with it. And uh, there you go, here's the title page. <clears throat> and essentially, it all boils down to well, there could be a lot of causes, but uh, I'm more interested in just creating a fix for it rather than uh, necessarily a, a cause. Essentially, when you push uh, uh, a note, the CPU uh, down here is sending a clock pulse to an input pin. And depending on the uh, position or the timing of that clock pulse, uh, there are eight outputs, so there's about eight timing positions, if you like, for this clock pulse, uh, or square wave pulse. <clears throat> it can determine, uh, through the keyboard matrix, the arrangement of eight outputs and eight inputs to see where these keys lie, which key you're pressing. Uh, it can determine the note. And if we kind of look at it on the oscilloscope here, uh, maybe you can see a little bit of noise at the bottom there. In fact, if I take the, uh, the measurements off, it's probably easier to see. A little bit of noise on that key. I'm not, I'm monitoring a particular key, and I'm not, that's not the one I'm playing. So there's a bit of crossover there. A little bit more crossover. This is, again, uh, a different key that I'm playing and not the key that I'm monitoring on the oscilloscope. And then here, that's the kind of signal you'd expect from the oscillos uh, from the, uh, the CPU, a nice square wave. You can see it's a bit jittery uh, and uh, that has some impact elsewhere, but uh, not for this video. Um, but you can also hear that double note. Now you'll notice I'm pushing, this is the key that I'm monitoring on the oscilloscope and this is the adjacent key which creates the sound, you'll notice that there's a small difference in amplitude between the received signals at the same input pin. So if we look here, we've got one, two, three, four, four and a half, uh, that's about four and a half divisions on the screen. And the next note up, you get about uh, 3.9, 3.8 divisions on the screen. Now this is the wrong key this is the crossover, this is the false image that's appearing on the uh, the key input. That's the correct one, that's the false one, and because you get two relatively strong signals, the keyboard CPU thinks that two keys are being pressed. So what we really want to do is somehow filter out the uh, the, the phantom key from the, uh, the correct key. And basically the way I'm going to try and do it is simply with a resistor. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a sort of an attenuation of the signal, a voltage drop across the resistor, uh, so that remember there's a relative size difference. I've got the, the good key is the good key note produces a voltage frequency here, the bad key down here. Well, at some point in the threshold, the voltages will be just such that the CPU listens to it or does not listen to it, considers it a high, uh, a pin going high or not a pin going high, um, and uh, so. If we listen to this, you can hear two notes, and if I start to tweak the uh, resistor, two notes, single note.
And if I continue with that resistor, the notes drop away. I'm all the while pressing that uh, key, and what's happening is I'm simply attenuating the clock pulse voltage to the CPU input. So clearly, that 5 volt note that we're getting is good enough to trigger a high pin reaction in the CPU, but the false image, uh, which is a little lower in amplitude, is being uh, attenuated just below that threshold. And if I loosen the attenuation again, now that note comes back. Now, this is an attenuation only on this key. Of course, I have to add an attenuation on this key to remove the lower note of that pair. Uh, it's a symmetrical problem that uh, on the key that you're interested in, the, the signal is, is relatively strong, but the phantom image from the other key in the pair is a little bit lower. So by creating a simple resistor uh, to attenuate both voltages, uh, if I can do my fingers here, both voltages, the good key peak and the, and the phantom key peak, they'll both come down, but at some point in the CPU there's a threshold, and we're just going to push this phantom voltage below that threshold. It's a bit of a rough and ready fix, uh, but if I can just now measure that voltage, uh, sorry, the resistance that I've got here, uh, and create a nice, uh, nice stable, uh, you know, through the whole component version, I'll just plenty of space in here. I'll just tape it down to the PCB and hopefully get this thing working. <laughs> There we go. Okay. And it looks like that's uh, about four and a half volts. One, two, three, four and a half volts. So maybe the the, the voltage, which is not good, is about uh, four volts. Anyway, that's it. Let's see if it gets working. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.